Hey everybody, this is the fifth hundred MediaWiz video and like the last few times we've done these uh, milestone episodes, this is going to be in a kind of podcast format and uh, I'm the guy that runs the channel obviously, Steve, and with me is my buddy Kat who has helped with a bunch of videos and uh, she's been doing these uh, uh, milestone videos with me for a while so I figured bring her back for this one. Hello. <laughs> uh, so this was fan voted that this one would be for all the live entertainment or attractions, uh, theme park related stuff, live shows, that kind of thing. So that's what this video is going to be. But unlike last time, which was a straightforward like worst of list, this one we're going to be going down the overall rank of worst to best. And uh, how we're going to do this is we're going to go, we're going to talk about the worst section first and then the more mediocre stuff in the middle of our lists. And then we're going to talk about the best of the best and we're not really going to go point by point we're just going to talk about which ones we ever whichever ones we want to talk about so it's got to be a little different from the last ones that we've done but uh yeah so let's, let's bust out our list okay uh, so uh so i'll let you go first and then i'll go down my worst okay um i put this at the bottom bottom because technically it is a pony fanboy thing but I think you said it was okay. So, uh, the MLP live show, it was. I'm I'm still saying those pony costumes are terrifying. Yeah, yeah. The those were the, that was bad. It's it's on mine. It's on my bottom. Uh, so you got MLP G3 live show. What else? I think at my bottom bottom, I put the TMNT coming out of their shells, getting down in your town. Tours. Also, yeah, yeah. I, I might as well go through mine because here, here's what I got for. Okay, so bottom, bottom on my list is Superstar Limo. Slightly above that is Submarine Quest. Above that is uh, Green Lantern First Flight. And then, then I, as a shared spot, I have both TMNT live shows and the MLP G3 live show, which is technically a cheat, but I, I don't care. That that needs to be talked about. Um, <laughs> Above that, Fast and Furious Supercharged, the last episode I did as of now. Uh, above that, It's a Small World. And above that, for the wor uh, rounding out the worst of section, is Primeval World, Primeval World, however it's pronounced. Yeah, that, so that's, that's all my worst. Um, for mine, I'm going from the bottom up as well. Uh, let's see, after those, my, my other two, it's uh, Superstar Limo. Uh, submarine quest uh, above that is fast and furious supercharged and then despicable me minion mayhem and then <laughs> mostly this isn't the worst but i know that you didn't enjoy it uh a chuck e cheese christmas <laughs> that's actually in my mid in my my mid section of the of the list but we can we can talk about that when we get to it okay um, yeah, Superstar Limo. It's I when I first years ago when I started doing these videos, I would have said that It's a Small World was the worst, and I've gotten so many comments telling me It's a Small World isn't that bad. And I, I looking at it now, it's higher up on the list than I would have figured years ago, because Superstar Limo is the worst ride Disney has ever made. It looked very mediocre, and what you replaced what they replaced it with later, which I'll get to later is a lot a lot more interesting you know <laughs> yeah absolutely uh i mean and the backstory behind it they had to rush it because the original plot was that it was going to be a faster paced ride and the plot was that you were supposed to be dodging paparazzi but then princess diane's death happened and that was related so they they pretty much scrambled to try and make it look like okay yeah no we, we didn't mean for that that we don't want to be connected to that that's so I, I get I get why they changed it to a slower ride, but it's just bad. And there's a reason that it didn't last long, because it sucked. Yeah, it looked really boring. And I can't blame them for wanting to change it after such a tragic event. Event They probably were thinking, oh, shit, we got to go. We got to change this now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, similarly, Submarine Quest, I mean, like the original concept was interesting, but 
I mean, slow ride, boring, the stupid mascot character is obnoxious with the stupid, like, you know, supercomputer of the sea! Like, that is so irritating. Um, and the fact that it's a submarine ride that doesn't even go underwater, it's like, Disneyland has that, Legoland has that. The fact that SeaWorld, of all places, couldn't do that is just kind of sad. It kind of reminded me of that lame ride from Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, where that Hello Kitty knockoff had a had a sea had a sea ride, but it barely went underwater too. I just kept thinking uh, that. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good comparison. Uh, and Green Lantern First Flight, I, I love how like at the time they didn't realize it was going to be a failure, but the fact they tried making a ride tie in to. Uh, the Green Lantern 2011 movie. It's like, come on, man. Even Ryan Reynolds doesn't like that movie. I'm only disappointed it didn't do well because it ended on a teaser of what we could have gotten with Sinestro. But right. if the ride was a bit of a flop, if the ride was a flop, the movie was a flop. Eh. And it just looked absolutely painful. Like there were reports of people getting like chest pain, pain around the arms. Cause it's one of those coasters where you have to be strapped in by your torso. And generally I'm not a fan of those kind of rides, but this one looks so much worse. Like even in the ride footage that I used for the video, you can hear people screaming in pain. Yeah, rides aren't supposed to be painful. They're supposed to be fun. The Ninja Turtle one, okay, I'll say this. Coming out of their Shells tour has one thing that I like. One thing, and that's Pizza Power. That was actually a good song. And they knew it was a good song because they used it in uh, one of the TMNT SNES games. So that was the one good thing. Oh, and also Shredder roasting kids in the audience. That was kind of funny. But other than that, 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 that whole live show was stupid. Yeah, because the instruments don't make sense. How are you supposed to play guitar with one string? And Leonardo plays a one string bass, which is good. How does that work? <laughs> uh, and getting down in your town, it's shorter, but it's somehow lamer. Like, and you can tell this because every time they cut to audience footage, nobody looks enthused, not even the kids. And like I said before last, to last time, uh, the audience doesn't look enchanted. They look scared. Yes. The, the the turtle costumes, they're bad. Like, this was not a good period for Ninja Turtles live entertainment because, okay, we got we may have been spoiled with the first theatrical movie, and the second movie was a eh, third movie, okay, that's a downward turn. But onward, like, this and the, the Christmas special and the stupid-ass turtle tunes or whatever that was called, these, these turtle costumes sucked. They, I don't think they even had the shells, right? They, oh, they got yeah. out of the shells? <laughs> yeah, it was like really flimsy like construction. Like you, you could totally see the seams where like the masks meet the neck. It's so it's so awful. Yeah, Jim Henson's creature shop, this is not. <laughs> and like the the thing with a lot of these live shows is they just started making the turtles all the same idiot. Like none of them had their distinct personalities. Yeah, that's a real bothersome thing when it comes to, like, anything that does the Turtles or any teenage superhero team poorly. Making them all the dumb one or the party dude, that doesn't make them distinct. Even in the 80s, they were very, they were pretty distinct with their, yeah. with their voice, with their voices and characterizations. That's why I think the... The 2012 series is probably my favorite because it actually made them distinct. And I can see why the most recent one tried to make them distinct with the, at least the, making them look different. But they made them all kind of kind of dopey. But yeah. that series, I feel, just came out too soon after the last one. So I can't blame that one too badly. Absolutely. Um and just one last thing about getting down in your town, the fight choreography is awful. Like, no no connection whatsoever. Like, like they're so out of sync, it's so, it's so horrible and embarrassing. MLP G3, world's biggest tea party. Just simply put, you know, since we talked about it last time, it's awful. It's an hour, I forget if it was an hour and a half. I'm pretty sure it was just an hour long, probably hour and a half, you know, in the actual thing for intermission, but 
it's bad. The costumes are scary. The, the, the song numbers are just padding. It's pretty much MLPG3 for an hour. And nobody wants that. Oh. And uh, admittedly, the one song in there, while it is kind of catchy because it's a parody of uh, a Casey and the Sunshine Band song, which which kid in the in that age range is gonna get that? Yeah, it's not. It doesn't have the clever writing of G four. No, I mean, I guess I could also I could also technically put the MLP G four live show because that one was shorter, but it was also incredibly cheaper, even more so than these live shows. But simply put, MLP G3, I remember just being a complete waste of time. And I, I just, I did not have fun watching it or even, I mean, it is kind of funny to riff, but it's, it's not enough. Um, let's see. Fast and Furious Supercharged. I mean, you, you said this last time. They should have just made this a 4D show instead of making it a ride. Yeah, I mean, I want to feel like I'm in the movie if I was a fan of the Fast and Furious film films. I mean, uh, I'd never seen any of the movies, so I I don't know what exactly what they're all about, but I know that they're, they're not that. I mean, it's, oh god, like, apparently they're making a Fast and Furious roller coaster now. It kind of sucks because they replaced the pretty awesome special effects showcase, but whatever makes Universal executives happy, I guess. <sighs> yes. They really are that meme from the Tom and Jerry movie. We've got to have money. <laughs> uh, it's a small world. It's, again, a lot higher than I originally thought it was going to be because I've softened up on it. I still don't really care for it, mainly because, the, like a lot of other people, the song drives me nuts. But I, I see that it came from a place of good intention. I personally just find the ride boring and the song very annoying. But if you, if you like It's a Small World, I totally see where you're coming from because it's escapist fantasy. So I get it. I'm still not a big fan of it, but it's not the worst. That still goes to freaking Superstar Limo. Yeah, I think I'd have to agree with you, you there. I, it, at least it didn't annoy me as much as the Despicable Me ride. Oh, I'm going to get to that. <laughs> uh, and and uh, to wrap up my the worst section with uh, Primeval World, Primeval World, however it's pronounced. Uh, simply put, it's a roller coaster that, it's one of those coasters where the cart spins around and jerks you around as you go around the track. And I rode it once, and I remember getting serious neck pain after it. And it's just tacky. Like, the whole thing is trying to be funny with, like, little visuals of, like, dinosaurs running from a meteor and stuff like that. It's The whole thing just came off as tacky and unpleasant. Yeah, like I said before, rides aren't supposed to make you feel hurt. You're supposed to have a good time. The only ride I can guess would make sense that you would hurt, feel hurt is the Scramblers. But even then, you know that going on one. With a roller coaster, aren't they supposed to have a gajillion safety regulations so that getting hurt doesn't happen? Yeah, right. All right, so now we move on to our mid-sections of our list. These are the, the, uh, the rides and the live entertainment that, not great, not horrible, they're just, they're, they're average. That's, that's why they're the middle of our list. So I'm going to go through mine really quickly, and then we can talk about each one as we, as we go. Uh, let's see, Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem, we're, we, we can rant about that. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese, Christmas, the very first media was ever. And um, oh man, it was it's really nostalgic to look back on this because it was the very first one. And I, I still don't know why it was the first thing I ever talked about. But uh, yeah, uh, Krabby Patty Celebration, uh, Beetlejuice's Rock and Graveyard Review, Ariel's Undersea Adventure, Mike and Sully to the Rescue. Kim Possible World Showcase Adventure and Jurassic World Live Tour. What about you? Um, I think my mid is fairly close. Uh, at the bottom of the mid, uh, it's a small world. Um, then after that is Jurassic World Live Tour. Then Beetlejuice's Rock and Graveyard Review. Then Mike and Sully to the Rescue. Then Kim Possible World Showcase Today. And then rounding out the top of the mid is Ariel's Undersea Adventure. Uh, let's see. We can rant about this one because I know you had it on your least favorite. Uh, Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem. Look, I like the first Despicable Me. I kind of stopped caring by the sequels. 
I saw the first Minions movie. I don't know why I did, but I did. I didn't see the second one. People keep saying that one was better. I, I still don't care enough to see it. Um, Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem. It's an effective 4D ride for those who may like Despicable Me, but the reason it's at the bottom of my mid-tier is just because, uh, I mean, it is Despicable Me. It's You have to deal with a lot of the Minions doing their stupid, like, jibber-jabber speak and... Uh, like a lot of 4D shows where they try to implement like actual smell and actual like feel, uh, you have to deal with the fart gun, and that was really stupid. So that's why it's at the bottom of my mid tier. Yeah, the fart gun definitely made it on, put it on the bottom of my list, like in the in the worst of the worst, because it's like I don't need that when I'm riding a ru- ride, and the mean. I think the minions just being overexposed like made it really annoying to me. It's, yeah. I'm I'm sure the ride is fine enough as a ride, but just the dumb jokes and the minions going is just it's just like Ugh. Yeah, I mean it's it's a like the first despicable me movie. Never saw the uh, never really saw the others and I refuse to see the minions films. They're just not for me. I, I totally understand that. Um, Chuck E. Cheese Christmas, I mean, for a Chuck E. Cheese Christmas show, it's fine. I think the only thing that kind of annoys me, why it's not any higher on my list, is because the cheesy song numbers, like the stupid pizza-related Christmas song parodies, oh, pizza pie, oh, pizza pie, it's like, uh, I, I am not a fan of puns, so that's why that's why I kind of lost points in my eyes. Yeah, the puns would probably get grating after a while. <laughs> and who goes to a pizza place on Christmas? Because, uh, you know, everyone's favorite place is to go during the holiday season, you know? Family houses, church, you know, help, uh, help at homeless shelters, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> uh, Krabby Patty Celebration, it's a half an hour live show that they did with, like, only three or four characters from SpongeBob at the Nick Hotel. Um, some corny jokes here and there, but I mean, some of it was pretty funny, uh, and you get some pretty good song sequences in between. For a half an hour time waster, it's perfectly serviceable, so that's why it's where it is on mine. Fair enough. Beetlejuice's Rocking Graveyard Review. The only thing that kept this any higher on my list was the fact that most of the jokes were extremely dated, and I'm assuming that even the newer versions of the show would be dated, because I reviewed one from, like, the late 90s. So there's a bunch of dated jokes referencing Beavis and Butthead and RoboCop and you name it. And the guy doing the, the Beetlejuice impression, he's not bad at it, but he definitely overacts it way more than Michael Keaton ever did. Yeah, I think we just have to wait a couple of years before we get the awesomeness that is Alex Brightman for the Broadway <laughs> show. Yeah, right? <laughs> yes. Um, and I mean, I will say this, this is the reason why it's a lot higher and why it's not in the bad section. There was production in this. I mean, the song numbers, you know, while a lot of them are just kind of covers of dated pop songs, I'm assuming that they did this for the newer ones too. Uh, cause there's a bunch of like, they pair, they do a cover of Thriller. They do a cover of a Meat Love song. It's, uh, they do one of the Beetlejuice songs from the movie, which is nice. I believe it was, um. I forget if it was the ending song or if it was the Banana Boat song, but at least it was one of the songs that I liked from Beetlejuice. Well, there's that, at least. Uh, let's see. Ariel's Undersea Adventure, one of the better Little Mermaid rides at Disney. I mean, there's a there was a live show. I don't know if they still have it, but there was at one point a live show where they seriously just used footage, like, projected onto screens from the movie. And I'm like, then I'd just be watching the damn movie instead. It's like, I don't need this. Yeah, unlike a lot of the stuff at the castle at n- at night when they do that, they don't try to mix in like li- like live performers and and footage like edited. It just at least this rot this ride like put in the effort to put in a kind of admittedly scary c- CGI aerial. Yeah, the CGI aerial. What was that? <laughs> like maybe they were trying to show off their technology again. Oh, yeah. so- yeah, there's also a Donald Duck ride that put a lot of the characters in CG, except that one was actually pretty underrated. From what I can remember, that one was pretty fun. Um, 
But this, I mean, it's pretty much just a recreation of stuff from the movie and like a quick five minute ride. And it's it's perfectly fine for what it is. The only thing that sucks, and I will I hold on to this criticism, the fact that we didn't get to see a um we didn't get to see a recreation of Ursula's death, lame. <laughs> Imagine a giant like Ursula, like animatronic, like going down to the water. That would be really atmospheric and awesome, but sadly it wasn't there. Yeah, maybe they could have even tried to incorporate some of the deleted scenes of what they could have done for that climax, like having a bunch of tentacles with Ursula's face trying to attack the uh, the people on the ride. That would have That's, been cool. That would have been really cool. Uh, let's see. Mike and Sully to the rescue. This was made to replace um superstar limo and just based on the fact that it's based on a movie that's really entertaining like monsters inc is already a step in the right direction um it's still a slow ride but i mean if you're a fan of monsters inc like i am it's it's so entertaining plus it is really funny to see randall trying to be all menacing but then okay. it's but then sully's like hey look there's boo's door <laughs> that's what yeah look, i will get that kid look booze door it's that's that is funny it's yeah it's like it's like we got to condense the movie into five minutes i know where this might seem a little rushed but go 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 we need to we need to we need to take away people's memory of superstar limo do it now and i i think one of the funniest bits is when they have uh the little girls goodbye to sully yeah, they totally rushed it. It's not as yeah, emotional oh. as the original. <laughs> Goodbye, boo. Bye. <laughs> You're right. You're yeah. That that's why it's not any higher. That's why it's not in, like the the best of the best section for my list. It's like it, it that part it is definitely rushed because they had to work with the the time frame that Superstar Limo originally was, which is like roughly like five to seven, eight minutes long. So it definitely that's its biggest problem, is that it's definitely rushed. Uh, Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kim Possible World Showcase. Uh, I'm not the world's biggest fan of Epcot. It has a few good things in there, but uh, I went there a couple times and it was just kind of boring. Like, I mean, it, there's definitely educational stuff there. So if you're into that, then cool. But uh, I feel like if I was around for this, it probably would have made it a little bit more interesting because I was a big Kim Possible fan. And um I mean, it is kind of an interesting idea that you go around from to the different uh, areas of Epcot that are supposed to represent different parts of the world, and you're supposed to be, like, on the hunt for villains, and all that stuff is kind of cool. Uh, it's pretty much just a glorified scavenger hunt. Uh, wish there was more of Kim and Ron, because there's definitely a lot of Wade, which is nice, but, uh, you know, like, it feels kind of, like, it feels kind of cheap in that department. And speaking of cheap, the animation on the little flip phones that you get like they're so obviously flash animated and it's so distracting because it's really really cheap and that sucks since the show's animation was really good yeah uh and i mean like overall like you know when i first heard about this i was like oh was there a kim possible live show or something and it was like oh it's a scavenger hunt okay like i guess that's something um eventually they replaced it with uh what was it they replaced it with oh uh phineas and ferb agent p world showcase and apparently they're trying to make it a ducktales themed one now so who knows maybe those will be pretty impressive i'd definitely be on board for a ducktales one and lastly for jurassic world live tour i mean it was impressive with the animatronics which i'm going to talk about later when we get to the actual jurassic park ride in the best of the best but the animatronics were all right, and the story, while it is very surface level, it's like, you know, it's supposed to be a mid quill between the first one and the second one. It's fine for what it is. I think the only thing that kept it from being any better was the really stupid forced new characters they have in there. Like, the love interest. I don't know why he was there. Like, it's like, okay, yeah, Chris Pratt's character and... Uh, the main woman's character, they're not going to get together, so let's just have a love interest for her who's a, a nerd who has feelings for her, but he doesn't know how to say it, yada yada. And then you get to the comic relief. Oh my god, the comic relief. Whenever they try to force in these characters where it's like, hey, I'm a social media influencer. Oh, whoa, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, bro. It's like, oh, that's that's totally old people trying too hard to be like, this is what young people like, right? 
Yeah, that's definitely the a Hollywood executive's idea of what young people are into. That's kind of terrifying. Hey man, you want to you want to join my podcast? It's like, okay, do the people that made this do they know what that is? Because it feels like it's just a bunch of old people going, uh, buzzwords for what young people like: podcast, YouTube, Twitch, HTTP, uh, TikTok, like hula hoops, uh, Game Boy switches. Ah <laughs> uh, man. All right. So now we get to the best of the best, and I'm gonna let you go first. I'm very curious what you have on your top. Okay. Um, I managed to like narrow it down to four, but these mm -hmm. were the ones that I I think work the best. Um, uh, first is Haunted Mansion Holiday. Uh, next is Waterworld, a live sea war spectacular. Then Space Mountain. And for me, since this is a ride I actually got to do, the SpongeBob 4D ride. Ah, you see, that's also in my top four. So you know what? We're, we're very close on that. Yay! Uh, so for my, uh, my best of the best, I narrowed it down to the top. 10 so okay so number 10 splash mountain which say what you want about it it has a very interesting history as a ride not the movie it's based on but it has a very interesting history behind it and the drop is awesome so that like just based on that alone i don't care if they change it if they do then that's great if they don't fine uh as long as they keep the the ride itself like the actual like drop and the actual like you know the, the entertaining music and animatronics you know whatever movie it's based on then I'm totally fine with that. Uh, let's see. Waterworld, Live Sea, War Spectacular. How is it that they took a really bad movie like Waterworld and they actually made an entertaining live show out of it? Well, I think they probably knew they had a, a lesson to learn from the mo movie. Like, just keep it simple. And from what you showed in your footage, it worked. Yeah. It was re like really well done fight choreography really well done uh well-timed special effects like with the fire effects and the the plane crash was really damn good like even after all these years that's still really impressive um the fact they were pretty much able to condense the plot into a pretty good 20 minutes and make it like action-packed and still very like character driven and entertaining like it's actually impressive so you know, I commend them so much for the fact they were able to redeem one of the most hated bombs known as Waterworld. At least they didn't have a guy drinking his own pee, and yes. that plane crash was awesome. I want to know how they did that. Number eight, Haunted Mansion Holiday. Like I, okay, you take one of the best horror-themed rides in the park, like Haunted Mansion, and you mix it with you know one of the biggest cult classics like Nightmare Before Christmas. You put them together, it really is a Reese's Pieces situation where it's so good. Def definitely. I'm, I'm amazed that they're able to actually change the ride so you can, like, so it, it is uh, Nightmare Before Christmas themed. Like, how, because it probably takes a lot of effort to change the ride from the regular spooky Haunted Mansion to something slightly more friendly. Yeah, like, I mean, usually what they do is they have to sh shut down for, at least, I think, a month or two in advance, and then they have to swap it out. The weird thing is, like, I, I'm perfectly fine with it, but I know some people complain about it, that they run Haunted Mansion Holiday, which is obviously a little bit more Christmas-themed, because you got Nightmare Before Christmas in there, that you have this more Christmas-themed ride going on during Halloween, which that does, admittedly kind of sucks, but... I honestly welcome it. I'm perfectly fine with it. I thought it was very fun and very entertaining. And they somehow meshed the two things together so perfectly. Yeah, I could totally see Jack Skellington and friends taking over a haunted mansion for a month. Uh, let's see. Nicktoon Blast. I remember when I was a little kid and they had this ride at Universal. I remember I, I dragged my parents to take me on it like at least three times in one day because I loved this ride so much. <laughs> Nicktoon Blast is basically a 4d show it's it was what was eventually replaced with minion mayhem which screw that but it was the jimmy neutron ride where jimmy neutron and carl are flying through different nicktoon universes like they go through hey arnold they go through 
uh, Fairly Odd Parents, Rugrats, and of course SpongeBob. And it's so entertaining how they do it. It's like a really good motion simulator, and it's such a neat little crossover between all the different things. And that's one of the things that I thought Nick was really good at was combining all their shows and showing that like kind of like Cartoon Network CG City before they started doing it, kind of. Yeah, I could definitely see enjoying this ride a ton if I was a little kid and had gone to Universal. That would have been fun. That would have been so fun. I probably would have dragged my mom and sister to that like every time I would if I would go there. And, and it shows that, see, some crossovers can work in some capacity. Uh, Nickelodeon was like the best at that. Like Cartoon Network didn't have that many crossovers. Nick or Disney, they had crossovers, but a lot of them were uh, at that time. A lot of the crossovers were uh, with Lilo and Stitch for some reason, which weird, but okay. Yeah, that one was a bit odd, but Nickelodeon made it work. Heck, it made yep. Jimmy the Jimmy Neutron and Fairly Odd Parents crossing over plausible. Yeah, I mean, and that was just, that actual special came out a year after this ride came ride came out, so that was that was fascinating. <laughs> Extraterrestrial alien encounter. This is like one of the best scary rides Disney has ever had, and uh, they ended up replacing it with a Lilo and Stitch ride, which just kind of consists of you know Stitch running around making alien sounds in the dark and burping because of course. Charming. Uh, yeah. But Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter, this was basically them trying to do a ride based around the Alien franchise uh, without actually saying it because I don't think they got the rights to it. But for a scary ride where it's like the lights are out and they simulate that like an alien is running around and like breathing and snarling at you, it's it was really effective. Like I was getting scared just by the footage that I was watching. I'm like, that's so cool. And I find this like doubly ironic since... Disney apparently these days says, oh, no, no, we don't want to scare anyone when they clearly wanted to with some rides like that and early movie properties. But it was, eh. it was back when the studios had balls and they just. Eh. Uh, also, this ride gets points because you have a robot character played by Tim Curry and he is so fun in the role. You can never go wrong with Tim Curry, even in a bad movie or project. Oh, absolutely. So top five, uh, Jurassic Park, the ride. This is easily one of Universal's best. The animatronics on the T-Rex still hold up after all this time. And uh, there's lots of good tension building. This is pretty much like Universal's much better version of Splash Mountain because it has a big watery drop. And it's so intense because before you hit the drop, this T-Rex head crashes through the roof of the facility that you're in. And it's so scary, and then you just take this massive plunge, and it's just, it's so good. Because there's lots of buildup before that, like, you know, oh no, there's raptors. You see a jeep that looks like it crashed because it looks like it was hijacked by some some dinosaurs that attacked. It's so, it's a really effective scary ride. And, like, scary rides, when they're done really well, like this one, an extraterrestrial alien encounter, they're they're, like, some of my favorites. I would definitely check it out, even if I would probably be screaming like a maniac at how scary it is. But that's part of the fun, at least yeah. this this time around. Number four, SpongeBob 4D and the Great Jelly Rescue, which is basically the sequel ride. Uh, I, I went on this ride once at an aquarium, and I loved it. Like, it is so fun. You can, I still enjoy watching the footage of it, and the fact that people have, like, memed this ride it's, to some extent, I absolutely love it. Like, there, there's just so much fun here. Like, it feels like a good placing the audience into the world. Even when, like, the, the first scene is the the painting of the pirate, you know, lunging out, grabbing the audience, and, like, thrusting us down. And then there's, like, water that's splashed in the audience's face. It's so good. Oh, my gosh. When I saw this ride at Dollywood, when I went years ago as a little kid, I loved it. I was so happy that this existed. And I was just having a good time, like be like really feeling like I was in Bikini Bottom. And scary CGI asi aside, since this was you know before the the second SpongeBob movie where they perfected CGI SpongeBob, it actually still holds up fa fairly well because you feel like you're there. Though it actually brings up a good point: how come SpongeBob never goes back to rock bottom? 
until a little later. Rock Bottom yeah. is such a unique location. I would love to see more episodes down there. Right? Man, you're right. Why why didn't they do more of that? And um and as for Great Jelly Rescue, it, it, it's a good follow up. You know, the plot being that you have to stop Plankton from kidnapping jellyfish uh, so that he can power a device to try and take over Bikini Bottom and get the formula. Uh, the fact that they implemented Sandy this time around was cool. They got the Flying Dutchman in there. I think the scariest thing about this ride is the fact that they used uh, an LMFAO song. That's that's terrifying. <laughs> that is terrifying. <laughs> Uh, it's like, yeah, that's what I want to imagine. SpongeBob and that the guys that that made sexy and I know it, I know. Yeah, that's all kinds of nope. Number three, my all-time favorite horror-themed ride, uh, Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. The ride itself is awesome. It's extremely well done. Uh, I really think that that um, I'm trying to think, what was I going to say? Uh, I really think that. Like, the atmosphere is truly what makes this ride spectacular. And the effects, even from back then, was really well done. The effects of, like, you know, the ghosts that you see as you go through. The music is really effective at scaring the audience. Like, it has a good, like, kind of build up. And then the, the actual drop itself. When I was a kid, when I did this ride for the first time, I was terrified. But now that I'm older, I, I still think this is, like, one of the coolest rides that Disney has. And they eventually traded it in for a Guardians of the Galaxy ride, which is cool, but... I'm always going to miss Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Um, I don't know if I would have been able to go on that ride as a kid or even now, because drop rides, like, scare me too bad that I don't think I could do it myself. Myself, I would probably be the one to wimp out and just wait outside, <laughs> truthfully. Uh, uh, hey, don't you worry. I was like that when I was a little kid. Like, my sister wanted to go on it, and I, I didn't want to. So, like, I, I, I totally understand if people weren't into these kind of rides. Yeah, not nothing against them. They're, people, If people want to drop down from the sky, that's all on them. I'm just way too scared. <laughs> Can we at least agree that the ride was better than the movie? Yes. This Steve Gutenberg in yet another crappy TV movie, uh, even though this one was still better than the Casper movie he was in. That movie still sucks. Yeah, so there's that at least. <laughs> uh, at least it was kind of a faithful adaptation to the ride. Uh, and I, are they trying to make another one? Like, are they trying to make a movie based on the ride? I know they're trying to do Haunted Mansion again, but this time it has wow, Owen Wilson. Yeah, and Danny DeVito. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I think I saw his name in the credits somewhere. I think he's one of the ghosts. Oh, my God, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number two, SpongeBob on Broadway. This 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 musical is fantastic. Like, there are a lot of really good comedy Broadway shows, and this is easily one of them. The fact they were able to make SpongeBob into this, like, grand-scale Broadway musical with all these, like, really beautifully crafted songs, really good choreography, really good use of the characters, um, even even character interactions that we don't really see that often, like Mr. Krabs and Pearl, and uh, even the way they handled Plankton and Karen was, like, super interesting, and, like, <laughs> the, the way they made the costume for Karen for the, the actress was, like, like really funny um and the humor itself is just like one of the best things about it there are so many great funny things and lots of good callbacks to the spongebob franchise and um i think we can all agree the best song is still the squidward song that was fantastic oh my gosh yes i i saw a tv airing of the musical and what they did something awesome they actually had like Tom Kenny, Patchy the Pirate, pop in at the end of the, mu the musical oh. to interact with SpongeBob, sort of as a awesome. passing of the torch, and it was oh, that's adorable. Awesome. That's super awesome. That's like that's like in the um that's like in that one anniversary they did for SpongeBob's birthday, and you had Patchy and SpongeBob finally meet. That's precious. Yeah, and sidebar that that special was really really good. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> And uh, and my number one, my all-time favorite ride from Disney, Space Mountain. Space Mountain is awesome. Uh, again, I'm not the world's biggest fan of, like, super intense speed rides, but 
this one is so much this one's just a blast to go through quite literally you know you strap in and it simulates that you're like hitting some kind of like gravitational warp and you're going through this massive space jump and it's you know the, the one thing that is a little bit scary especially if you don't like dark rides is the dark element but there are awesome versions of the ride where they have these like awesome light shows as you go through it's super awesome and uh i don't know i've loved it ever since i was a kid and even to this day space mountain is freaking epic i would love to eventually go on space mountain whenever i get, get back to a disney park i haven't been to a disney park since i was like five and at Disneyland like years uh, ago. So if I eventually get my butt down to Florida to go to Disney or to California to see some family and go to Disney, that would be one of my first rides to check out, truthfully, because it just looks fun. When I think of an epic Disney ride at one of the parks, I think of that. So yeah, uh, that does it for our lists. Uh, any closing thoughts, Kat? Um, I hope that there's more rides that you get to look at and some live shows because there's still plenty out out there, right? Oh yeah, there there's plenty that I have my eyes on that I want to do. There's a couple that were suggested to me that were that range from Universal to uh, back to uh, uh, Six Flags, which is interesting. I haven't I've only done one Six Flags ride, and it was unfortunately that stupid Green Lantern one. Um, so it'd be fun to revisit those places and talk about some of the live shows there. That I, I'm told that there's a Powerpuff Girls themed live show from oh. some time. That I think that'd be kind of fun to look at. Ooh, you'll have to let me know if you find it because that sounds fascinating. And <laughs> I hope that the cost, if it's if it's a live show, I hope the costumes aren't terrifying. And remember what you were saying before about uh, possibly thinking that there was a Kim Possible live show. Well, we could have had scary costumes for that, too. Oh, my God. Well, speaking of which, have you seen the still shots for the Phineas and Ferb live show? Some of the costumes in that are bizarre looking. They look scary. It doesn't look right. It's like, you know, sometimes you just don't need to put things in live action. You just don't. Yeah. And there, there's a reason why it's a like a 2D cartoon. It looks cute in two, 2D, but try to make it 3D. It's ugh. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, there's a couple of other ones. I I can't think of some of the rides off the top of my head, but there's some other live shows I would definitely like to look at. Apparently, I this might be. Let me let me double check because I I did hear that there was an Equestria Girls live show. I need to check if that's true. I really hope that the costumes aren't scary for that. <laughs> um. I'm not seeing anything right away. Uh, all I'm getting is just a bunch of the. Uh, like regular G4 live shows. Maybe that could be a, a video in the future. Maybe it could be another Media Wiz Pony Fanboy crossover to have the the uh, MLP G4 live shows. Because I again, I did a video for it long ago with 30s Man, but I really want to I want to update that because like that that G4 live show, it was shorter, but it was somehow cheaper. I mean, it only played at a couple places, but how is it that like only one version of the show had Pinkie Pie, but otherwise it only had costumes for three characters. It had Twilight, Rainbow Dash, and Applejack, and they were all singing songs from, from season one. And most of those songs from season one were not sung by any of them. Yeah, that seems really odd. And what about Rarity or Fluttershy? They're known for having beautiful voices. So Absolutely. And not that the others didn't have fine voices themselves, but... the if you're going to have a live show with singing, don't you want to have, like, the Rarity or Fluttershy? Eh. <laughs> Again, it, it, I guess in the one that has Pinkie Pie, it makes sense for them to be singing all these songs from G1. Because I'm assuming this came out, like, probably before Season 2 even came out. But still, like, the version that most people have seen on YouTube is the one that has only those three characters. So the fact that they're singing songs that aren't even their song, like they're singing for Pinky instead of Pinky singing to them, just makes it really bizarre. So who knows, that could be a potential future uh, Pony Fanboy or Media Wish review. Um, if you if you manage to find them, I think you could definitely get some, uh, some stuff to talk about with the Rugrats live show. I saw that oh. as a kid and it was weird. 
that was at Universal, right? Um, I saw it on stage in like somewhere. So, okay. but you could probably it might be different, but eh, you might be able to find find it and the Pokemon live show. Oh my God, yeah, all the Pokemon stuff. Because I I know like a bunch of people have suggested over the years to do MediaWiz video talking about naruto and pokemon and sailor moon i do eventually want to get into that because i i know i haven't done that many anime related things for media was so i will eventually try to do stuff for that if i can find the pokemon live show you're talking about i'd be very curious to check it out and watch it at least i've listened to some of the songs from the soundtrack and they're really good like like better than i think that has a right to be being good good but it's insanely good good and interesting trivia the guy that plays giovanni in the live show played maximilian pegasus for four kids in their dub what? yes oh my god, i'm that's, not that's, kidding that's, that's fascinating oh my god holy crap I, i'm looking at it right now there actually is an equestria girls live show so you know what yeah th this all this could potentially be media was reviews in the future. I, I could totally see Pokemon live show, uh, Equestria Girls or MLP live show. Uh, what was the other one we said? Uh, Powerpuff Rats. Girls live show or Powerpuff Girls and Rugrats. I could totally see like live show reviews for that sometime in the future. So who knows? Let's see how far we get in another 500 episodes. Yep, it'll be fun. Uh, so anyways, yeah, that, that pretty much does it for the 500th episode. Uh, it was fun going down some of these attractions and uh, other live entertainment that were covered. And looks like we already got ourselves some, some good ideas for future episodes to come. So thank you once again, Kat, for doing this with me. It was a pleasure to talk about this with you. Yeah, it was really fu fun. And as always, guys, uh, just tune in for more content coming up. Uh, there's some more media with stuff coming this month. There's some. There's another Blockbusters video. There's another Chris T. Ian video. A Pony Fanboy cooking video. So it's we're gonna have our second cooking video for the channel. Um, until then, guys. Uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye.